Hey everybody, it's Missy again. Thanks for joining me today. I have another layout in my Using Older Supplies series. I think this is my ninth one. And for this one, I'm going to use some Echo Park. This is the Here and Now collection. It's a few years old, and I really, really love this collection when I got it, and I made a couple pages with it, and then did like we always do, and hoard the rest of it for later, because it's so pretty and you just want to save it. I love that floral paper, and I even found this circle die cut that I made on my cameo. I don't even remember doing that, but I saved it, so I think I'm going to use it on this page. And I, I love the colors here. I love the patterns. It's a very uh, general collection. You know, it's not too themed. It's for the everyday type of scrapbooking, which is what I like to do. It's got lots of black and white. It's got all these bright colors. I have a lot of the solid papers left. And uh, there's the other sticker sheet there with the alphas and everything. So this was what jumped out at me and inspired me to create for today. So I'm going to use this pool photo of my daughter in the pool. And it's a really light uh, background with the water. And that pattern paper right there matches that color perfectly. And the design on that pattern paper reminds me of like water. I guess when you, you know, you throw something in the pool and then the ripples and it creates like a circle ripple effect. That's kind of what those circles look like up close. There's like other circles spreading out from all those smaller circles. So I'm going to make that my background. And these flowers were just calling out to me to cut them out. And I like the fact that they're, they're white flowers, but they're outlined in blue. You know, that's different. Usually the flowers are colored. And I thought that was really pretty and different. So I just had to fussy cut some of these out. And even though this is a pool photo, I really didn't care. I wanted to use these flowers in some way. So I cut out four of them and I'm going to sort of arrange them like I have there. And I wanted to jazz up the background since I'm not using any white cardstock. I know. I can't believe that. Uh, I wanted to use up the pattern paper. I feel like for these stash videos, I really want to concentrate on using as much paper as I can because... For whatever reason, I usually just gravitate towards the embellishments a lot, and I still have all this paper left over. So I thought, no white backgrounds, use up the paper. So this is a really pretty, different color polka dot paper. It's got that light blue in it. It's got pink, it's got green, a couple shades of green, a couple shades of pink. And I'm going to jazz it up, and I'm going to use some white gesso. I know I do this almost every project that I make. I just feel like I cannot make a layout without some paint or something on it. It's just, it's just my thing. So anyway, I'm just smudging down some white cardstock. I want to fade out some of those dots, not completely, but just make them a little hazy and go ahead and get my paper ready for some paint. So I'm going to pull out my Kuretake uh, watercolor set here. I haven't used these in a while. The colors are just beautiful, and they are perfect for what I like to do here, which is use my brush and use the packaging technique, because I want a lot of pink on the background. Since I've already got a lot of blue in my picture and a lot of blue on my background, I want to go in an opposite color here and use some pink. And I'm just dabbing some on with my brush and then using the packaging to continue to smudge it around. And I want this to, you know, I say this almost every video, I like for the mixed media stuff to kind of peek out from behind the papers or the pictures, or the die cuts or whatever it is. And so in order to do that, you have to kind of put a lot on there to make it look like there's not a lot on there, if that makes any sense at all. I'm going to have that one flower that I cut on the edge. It's going to be over there on the left. And then the flower cluster with the photos are going to be over here on the right. And I'm doing that because in the picture, she's looking toward the left. So I want her on the right, so it looks like she is looking across the page. So I'm going to stick all these flowers together to create this really cute cluster. And since the flowers are white and that polka dot paper is practically white, I need something to break that up so it's divided and you can see the flowers because if I didn't put anything behind it, they would just sort of blend in with those dots and then you really wouldn't be able to tell that they're flowers. So even though this looks like a whole lot of pink mess, it's eventually just going to peek out from behind the flowers. And so I add a little bit of paint 
and then bring the flowers back over to see what it looks like. And I guess you wouldn't have to put all the paint in the middle where you know the flowers are going to cover, but at this point I wasn't sure 100% which direction I was going to turn the flowers, and so I just decided I'll just cover the whole area. That way, no matter which direction I twist those flowers under my picture, that area is going to be covered and you're going to be able to see that pink from behind it. And so you can still see some of the dots behind the pink, but they're not as dark as they would be before I put the gesso on it. So I'm going to add in a little bit of yellow. I know these are my three favorite colors, pink, yellow, and aqua. And I'm just going to use my brush. I don't want to create an orange color here. So I want to make sure that the yellow is not touching the pink too much because, you know, everything's still kind of wet. And I want to stick with yellow and pink. And I really like how this is looking. It's very different. Um, as usual, when I first started this, I didn't really have an end design in mind. And at this point, I, I didn't really know what embellishments I, were gonna, I was going to use, um, what my title was going to be, anything like that. And so I just knew that I wanted to get that paint down there and then I wanted to arrange those flowers. And so now you can really see how those flowers pop off the background with that pink there. So now I'm going to work on some layers behind the picture. And I'm just going to use a couple of these cut aparts from this here and now sheet. The pink is so rich. I really love the pinks in this collection. And again, I've already got a lot of blue going on in my picture, and so I used yellow and pink as layers behind it. So if I do, I actually do wind up using a piece of blue back there, but it's going to be a darker turquoisey blue, so it's not going to just be too much light blue, since I've already got plenty of that. This is some tissue paper from my stash. I use that quite a lot. Just gives a little subtle layer behind everything, or behind the picture. And I thought I would take advantage of that little bracket shape on that card and just cut around it, just to give it a little bit more interest. Okay, so I'm gonna start going through Oh yeah, I forgot. Here's the blue piece I was talking about. I do add a blue layer behind everything, but it's darker, and so it's it's a little bit different than that pool color. Okay, so I got my layers done, and that's pretty much where those flowers are going to go and where my picture's going to go. So I'm going to stick down the flowers. Well, the flower on the left. Okay, here's that die cut that I found in this collection, and I play around with it. I like the way it looks, but I didn't know if I wanted to use it straight on, like a square, or tilt it this way and use it as kind of a, a diamond shape. So I play around with that a little bit. I go crooked, I make it straight, couldn't decide 100% which way I liked it. But I thought it was cool that I had saved that, and uh, I think it looks nice as a background design. It just gives a little bit more of a darker blue peeking out from behind there. So I took it out for now, and I went ahead and did a little bit of stitching, and that's a darker turquoise color. I think it stands out a little bit more, and I uh, just like the way it looked. It gave it a little bit more of a crisp edge up there at the top of that dotted paper. So here I go again, playing with that die cut. I like the way it looks both ways. I just couldn't decide. And that's a die cut from the Silhouette store. I believe it's, I can't remember what it's called, but it's in a, it's a card to create a design on the front of a card. So I think I just typed in circles and found it. It's one of the first Silhouette cut files I bought years ago, so I don't remember the name of it, but I used it several times. So I'm adding my thread. I'm going to use that dark blue again or the darker turquoise blue, and some yellow. And I'm adding all of the thread in before I glue any of that stuff down there 
uh, on the right. And I've always seemed to get questions about what kind of glue I use in that fine line bottle, and it is the Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. Although, and I always get that at Michael's, they have recently changed the name of it. It's still Scotch, but it's now called Tacky Glue. It's in the same type of bottle. They've just changed the, the label a little bit, but it seems to be working the same way. I really like it. It never dries up in that bottle. I just have to remember not to leave the lid off for too long because the little that little uh, silver needle point tip will dry pretty quickly. So you need to put the lid back on it after... A minute or two because it is a pain in the butt to try to unglue that thing. So just save yourself the hassle and put the lid back on it. I added some blue thread over there on the left under that other lonesome flower. Now I'm going to come in and try to work on the title. I wasn't sure. I wanted to use up some of the stickers but I don't know. That one just didn't jump out at me. Now this is another Echo Park collection, Summer Bliss maybe? I can't remember. I love the colors, Summer something. It's from a few years ago. And even though she's not eating an ice cream cone, I really love that little cute chipboard pink ice cream cone. And I just like the way it looks because it's the perfect color. And I like the way it jazzes up that flower. So I do wind up using that. And I fussy cut a little flower. That's not a flower, that's a camera. Good grief. I already fussy cut flowers. Hello. Camera. And that was from one of the, uh, um, the Here and Now papers. I decided to bust up into my crate paper stash. Talk about mixing and matching. This was not part of my plan, but I went digging back on my shelves and found this um, bag of poolside stuff. And I still have a bunch of those pretty scripty word thickers that are chipboard. And so I thought, Hmm, this matches perfectly, so I'm going to use that as my title. Swimming. And then these are just some random stickers from that sticker sheet. If you had the poolside collection, then you probably remember this, and you may be hoarding it as well. But some of these images on here, and that's from the Pier collection, some of these images match this Echo Park collection. And so that's, to me, that's fun. When you find older stuff on your shelves, and you can mix and match collections, and, you know, when you're finished with your with your layout, you wouldn't even know that they weren't all from the same collection because they match so nicely. Added another sticker and then I'm going to come in with some flare buttons. And my flare buttons are from a flare for buttons. That's an Etsy store. Lots of really cute buttons. That's a summer one. It's light blue that I'm going to use right there on top of the picture. And I believe it says summertime. Enjoy the summertime. Something about summertime. But so it breaks up against the blue. I'm going to use some pink thread. And uh, it's also on top of a little sun sticker. And then I added that yellow Happy Life sticker. And then I added another flare button that's got the hashtag on it. Mainly because it's the perfect pink. And I've wanted to use that for a while. So it matched up pretty nicely. I'm going to add in my journaling. And then for my date, I decided to use some of the stickers from the Echo Park sticker sheet. Because I have a ton of those, and I never use those for whatever reason. I always reach for my date stamp. And so I thought, nope, I have all the letters for July and all the numbers for 2013. So I'm going to use those. And then I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. I did some pink stitching, and then I'm going to add a half of a flower sticker that matches those fussy cut flowers that I cut up in the beginning. And this just creates a fun little cluster down here at the bottom to kind of echo all the colors that I've used in the rest of the page. And that's it. That's the final layout. I really, really had a good time putting this together. It was really fun digging through my old stuff and combining the Echo Park with the crepe paper and putting this together. And uh, I never, ever get tired of making summer sunny pool pages because those are my ultimate favorite. So let me know if you have any questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I will be back soon with another video. I hope you guys have a great weekend and thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.